Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Thought we'd do something a little bit different today and do an unboxing of this, this little guy, the Nvidia Jetson Nano 2GB Developer Kit. Thought we'd do a quick unboxing and an overview, um, go over the specs and just take a quick look at the board in case some of you haven't seen it before and also go over what I want to use it for in the future. And we'll um, be making some videos on that also. I've got my overhead camera rigged up, lights and microphone and everything, and literally it's the most precarious setup ever. <laughs> the whole place is held together by sellotape right now. I just don't have um, the equipment to be able to do proper overhead shots, but so I've like rigged up something just absolutely terrible and it's it's literally held together by sellotape right now but but anyways enough about that let's unbox this little guy so this is the nvidia jetson nano 2 gigabyte it's the developer developer kit and this is a new board that has just came out from nvidia um i think it was released in october so just over a month old um and i got my hands on one for um using in the future so for some applications that i want to use in the future but we'll cover them in just a minute let's take a quick look at the box and then we'll get this guy opened and we will take a look at the specs so this is a it's not technically a single board computer like the raspberry pi or um what you would imagine a single board computer is it does technically have an add-on module onto this board but i think it's small enough and um to be called a, a single board computer, or that's at least what I would refer to it as anyways. Let's open up the seals. And if we take a quick look on the back, you'll see that we have a, so this is the Nvidia Jetson Nano 2 gigabyte developer kit. It's got a 128 core Nvidia Maxwell GPU. It's got a quad core ARM A57 processor. It's actually weird to see the processor listed after the GPU. Normally you would go CPU and then GPU, but here we go. I guess Nvidia being a GPU company, they want to put the GPU first. It's also got two gigabytes of LPDDR4 and a micro SD slot. In terms of IO, it's got one USB 3.1 port, a USB 2.0, um, type A, it's got two of those, and a micro B port. It's also got HDMI out and gigabit ethernet. So let's take a look inside the box. I haven't actually opened this, as you can see, I just cut the seals. Um, let's take a look. So there we have it, this little guy inside. Take him out and place him to the side. Oh no, give this a cute little Cute little paperwork. What's under here? Oh, okay. So this is the um, this is actually the wireless adapter that comes with the box or comes in the box. Some of the you can actually buy this kit without the wireless adapter. Um, it is a little bit cheaper, but I would suggest probably picking up the wireless adapter if you want to use Wi-Fi. So that's all that's inside the box. Let's open up this guy. So like I said, this came out um, just a couple of months ago, two months, one or two months ago in October. So when you think of single board computers or computers like this, you obviously think of the Raspberry Pi, which is the most natural competitor to this. Maybe not in terms of raw horsepower, but that's something we can possibly look into. So this is the Jetson Nano itself. It's small actually. I like the, um, the black PCB as well. It's nice and stealthy. And if we take a look at the I.O., you can see here we have one USB-C port and that is for power. We have a HDMI out and that is capable of 4K30, I do believe. We also have a USB, a single USB 3.0 port, two USB 2.0 ports, a gigabit ethernet port, which is nice to see also. And then we have a micro B port. I'm not actually sure what that micro B port is for, but I guess we'll find that out. So the other big thing you'll notice is this massive heatsink in the middle. It is a fanless design, um, but you can add a fan to it if you wish. There is actually a fan header right on the board. And you can see that this little guy is actually on its own separate board and then it connects back to the main board via this connector. You just take out these two screws and pop the little sides here 
and that should allow you to release the board. And on this um, daughter board, I believe, is all of the memory and CPU and the GPU. It's actually all on that board directly. Taking a closer look at the board, you'll also see that this has a 40 pin GPIO header right here. And that is capable of doing UART, I2C, I2S and SPI, as well as other just general, um, well, GPIO basically. So same as you get on a Raspberry Pi, you've got digital inputs and outputs. On the other side of the board, there is this camera connector just here. And that is a CSI2 connector, which is the same port as the Raspberry Pi uses. So you can use the same cameras with this board as you can with the Raspberry Pi. So it supports the Raspberry Pi um, Cam 2 and as well as the Raspberry Pi HQ camera. So that's actually good to see because it means you can, if you already have a Raspberry Pi with existing cameras, you can use that on this board also. But what about if we compare this to a Raspberry Pi? So there is a Raspberry Pi 3B. So there is a Raspberry Pi 3B for comparison. So you can see it's just a little bit bigger than a Raspberry Pi, maybe about a third bigger again. In terms of thickness, it's obviously gonna be a fair bit thicker because of that heat sink that's on the top. So there we go, you can see there, it is a fair bit bigger than the Raspberry Pi just because of that heatsink. But like I say, you can actually use a, um, a, pa a fan, you can attach a fan to this onto the top of the heatsink. You can see there, I don't know if that'll pick up on camera, but there's four um, screws there for a fan. And then there is a fan header connector right here. Right under that daughter board, there is also a SD card slot here. And so that, I'm not sure if that's picking up, but that is where you will insert the SD card for the OS, much the same as you do with a Raspberry Pi. I do believe that the more expensive Jetson Nano has an NVMe slot, um, which they've removed from this board, obviously, to cut costs and get down to that $59 MSRP. I picked this one up with my own money. This wasn't sent to me. So I picked this one up for £56 here in the UK. So pretty much the exact same. Um, price as in the US. Speaking of the Raspberry Pi 3, Nvidia actually says that this um, Jetson Nano 2GB is actually 8 to 73 times faster than the Raspberry Pi 4. Obviously that is quite a wide range and it's going to depend on the use case or what you plan to use this for as to how much more powerful it's going to be than this little guy. So what is this little guy for? Why would you need it? Why would you use it? What are the applications? Well because of that powerful GPU that's built right onto the board. It makes it incredibly useful for AI applications or things like robot, robotic applications or drones or camera feeds, basically real-time analyzing of camera images. So we've all seen those videos of like robots following around um, courses or mazes, avoiding obstacles, things like that. And that's kind of the perfect application for this type of board. It's aimed squarely at students and developers because of its low price point, um, but it is memory limited and perhaps not as powerful as the more expensive boards that NVIDIA sells, but I think this is a great application for people wanting to get into AI. But what do I want to use this board specifically for? Well, a couple of weeks back I made a video on object and person detection using dudes and tensorflow within home assistant and since then there has been some development within the deep stack community and more specifically for this little board that allows you to do um real-time video stream analyzing for objects and people using deep stack and home assistant specifically there's an integration for this board with home assistant also in the comments of that video a lot of people were asking if it was possible to do real-time face detection of people using um, dudes or TensorFlow or something similar and I wasn't too sure at the time how to go about that. But having seen this board, I think this is a perfect opportunity to give this a try. And there's also been some developments within Home Assistant in that few weeks since that video. So I'm really keen to give that a try and hopefully get something working on this that I can show to you. But that about does it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, you enjoyed this little different sort of setup than we normally do. Got the overhead camera. I hope to God it actually worked because I can't see what's going on. I hope the audio is okay because I can't see what's going on there either. Um, but 
Let me know if you enjoyed this type of video, if you want me to do more unboxing style videos. Um, and also let me know what you want me to, to show or do on this little guy um, and I will do my best to make that. I think there's loads of really cool applications that we can do with this and I'd be um, really interested to see what you guys would want to see and what you guys would do with it. So be sure to let me know in the comments. As always, thank you so much for watching. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button and I will catch you in the next video.